Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys my entire updated knife collection. This is going to be a long video. So uh, grab a beverage, grab a snack, kick back. Uh, I'm definitely going to be going over every last detail, every last knife that's in my collection. Um, this is definitely the most requested video as of late. I did this video a while back. In fact, I've done it multiple times, but since the last time I've done this video, I have acquired a lot of new stuff and I've been waiting for some of that stuff to come in uh, so that I could do this and have it all in here. So it's all here or the most recent acquisitions are here. So I'm going to be sharing that with you guys. We're going to go over the main core of my collection first, some of the nicer stuff. Then we're going to move on to some of the weirder stuff and some of the budget stuff in my collection. So you can stick around for that afterwards if you want to. Um, if you're new to my channel, I upload literally every single day. I've been doing that. I've been doing this for three years now. So if you like knife content, you like knife reviews, discussion topics, unboxing, stuff like that. If you're just big into pocket knives for whatever reason, you might like my channel. So if you want to subscribe, that would mean the world to me. Uh, thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Some of this stuff is available. And if it is available, you can almost bet for certain that it will be uh, located at the retailers I've got listed in the description. So if you see something you like, feel free to use those links and just type out the name of it in the retailer. Um, and it might be there. Uh, a lot of this stuff is is definitely not available, though, so I, I can't guarantee that it's all going to be there. Uh, some of this stuff is rare. Uh, some of it's, you know, just in general, it's just really difficult to get. So I'll kind of make mention of that as we go along. Uh, these are in no particular order, but they do tend to get nicer and more rare as we move up this way. But yeah, they're not necessarily in order by value. Starting off here. Um, with the, probably, the, you guys probably haven't seen me unbox this yet. This is the DLT Trading Exclusive Lion Steel Best Man in the Sheep's Foot Blade with Silver Twill. There's actually a bunch of different, um, these are definitely available right now. You can go down in the description and get them at DLT Trading. M390, Titanium Liners, Silver Twill. I think this guy comes in at about 110. There are versions in my Carta that come in a little bit less. This is excellent. Modern slip joints. This is probably my favorite modern slip joint that exists, and I'm really, really happy with it. Um, but uh, yeah, you guys will probably see me unbox this and review this in the near future. It's just the way that I schedule out the channel. So really like that one. Moving on here. And I know, by the way, you guys are going to ask me about this case. This is a Pelican 1450 case. I love this thing. It's excellent. It's got the areas for the uh, locks. It's got the pressure seal, this or that. It's also got the pressure control thing down here. Uh, waterproof up to a certain depth. Uh, the foam on the inside is now pack foam. You can buy these two items together on the now pack. That's N A L P A K website, but the Pelican case is more expensive than the Apache version, which is the, I think Apache 3,800. I know people will say that. So I'm just going to tell you, you can buy the Apache 3,800 and then you can buy the foam and save yourself some money. It's essentially the th same thing. I just really like how the outside of this feels. It feels a little bit more premium. It feels a little bit more, I don't know. It just feels nice. So, but you can do what you want to do. Uh, this is the 40 count, um, foam, uh, and it has worked well for me. Obviously I probably should have gotten a bigger one cause I don't have room for everything. Um, but anyways, moving on here, we have, uh, the, uh, QSP penguin in titanium and 154 CM. This is an excellent value knife. Excellent knife all the way around. If you, you know, like the idea of the penguin, you just want something a little more premium than the budget version that's out there. You can get a version of this that's 30 bucks if you want in my Carta and D2. Or you can go, what is this, 90, 95 for the um, 154CM and uh, titanium version of it. Uh, really nice. Uh, excellent value there. Moving on here. This was a knife that was donated uh, to the channel. And just so you guys know, uh, if you're new to my channel, uh, over the course of three and a half years and literally 2,000 uploads, yeah, some people do just send me stuff. Um, it's really nice. I give away a lot of stuff, believe me. If you're new here, I give away tons and tons and tons of knives on almost a weekly basis. Even still, you know, this is what the collection looks like, you know, given that I, I give a lot of that stuff away. Some things that people donate, they really want me to keep or they say do whatever you want with. 
And sometimes I do keep this stuff. You know, if they if they say, hey, this is for you. This was one of those. Uh, this is a Cold Steel Code 4, but it's in CTS XHP, which I know they don't do anymore. They do S35EN, which is fine. You can definitely get this knife, but I just wanted to keep this guy. Uh, given that it was uh, a rare bird in CTS XHP. Moving on here, definitely one of the more beastly knives in uh, the case here. This is the Cold Steel SR1 Lite, the uh, more budget version. Um, this is an ATR 13 MOV, which I honestly don't really even care about. This is a $60 mega beater, uh, ultra thick, ultra robust, and it has the Cold Steel triad lock. Um, yeah, I gave away my user version of this, and I just really wanted one back in case I needed a gigantic sledgehammer of a knife uh, that I didn't mind, you know, chewing up. So yeah, you can get that knife right now uh, for about 60 bucks in Tanto or Drop Point, or you can pay 160 and get it in S35VN and G10. Moving on here, a knife that I really need to give back to my wife because it's hers. This is the Kershaw Blur. To this day, uh, one of the only knives, still one of the only knives that is assisted that I actually like. I don't really like assisted knives, but I'll make an exception for the blur because it was one of my first, personally, my blur, which is not here, because I had I gave it away a long time ago. Uh, my blur uh, was one of the first nicer knives that I owned. This is S30V, US made knife. Uh, I think these, what are these, 75, 80 bucks, something like that. I've had it down here for a couple of years now and I really need to just give it back to my wife. You can definitely buy these knives right now. In the standard version, 14C28N, I think, or maybe it's 12C27, I can't really remember, uh, or you can buy an S30V. Moving on here, another gift, uh, definitely one that I have enjoyed carrying, uh, enjoyed carrying and using. This is the Giant Mouse Ace Riv, I think. Gosh, if I'm wrong, I'll correct myself. Uh, M390 and titanium, and I love this guy because it's not a, an exposed frame lock. It's a it's a, a liner lock, which has just been excellent. Nice size, nice flipping action. Um, I love that it's got the little hole there so I can do the reverse flick. This has just been an excellent uh, carry knife. And to the gentleman who uh, gave this to me, um, this was one that he said, I, I want you to keep this. Um, it's, I, thank you. I'm eternally grateful for this, and it, I, it's been a joy to carry. Love the wire clip. All of this is just an excellent knife. I don't know if this is still available or not. You guys can uh, check out the retailers down below if you want to. Moving on here, definitely one that people are going to ask about. If you don't already know about this, this is the Demco AD 20.5. Uh, easily one of the most used uh, most used knives down here. But and, and if you don't know, I definitely have knives that I don't use. <laughs> definitely. I am not afraid to admit that. I am a knife enthusiast collector and user there are certain knives in here that i use and some that i don't if that disgusts you you should definitely just you should definitely type me up a big long paragraph about how knives are meant to be used and i'm tarnishing the spirit of the object bah <laughs> i do what i want with the stuff that i paid for just like i'm sure you do uh with the stuff that you paid for so yeah that's my stance it's been that way for three years and two thousand uploads uh, not going to change. Anyways, the AD 20.5 is definitely a knife that gets used. This is Austin A, an injection mold plastic for $150. Wow, that's a lot of money for that. It's These are incredibly difficult to find because of the demand for these things right now. So you can sign up for email notifications at some of the retailers I've got down below or your favorite. You don't have to use mine. Your favorite retailer will likely get a batch of these at some point. They are excellent, right? Uh, materials not being ideal aside, uh, the design itself and the lock, the shark lock, of course, that everybody knows about at this point, fully ambidextrous and just as strong as the triad lock, uh, words of the person who invented it. And he also invented the triad lock. That's Andrew Demko. Yeah, definitely love that knife. Moving on here, the Wii, uh, Esprit. I keep wanting to say Esprit. Uh, this is probably the, um, it's my favorite thing that Wii has come out here, uh, come out with here in recent, uh, months or maybe even years. <laughs> uh, this is a Ray Laconico design, uh, CPM 20 CV and orange peel textured titanium, which is just beautiful. It's also got a front flipper, which works really well. And it's got some beautifully placed thumb studs. Uh, I think this is about seven and a half inches overall, something like that, maybe 7.75. Um, yeah, really, really like this one. I think these are about 220. I'm not gonna get all the prices right. It's hard to remember everything. Moving on here, we have the Spyderco Capara, except it's been shortened by my good friend Blade Chops on Instagram. Uh, he will take 
pretty much any knife, and if it's possible, shorten it up and make it smaller if you want that. He made this one for me, and it's been an absolute joy to carry. I'm not gonna say that I like it necessarily more than the full-size Capara. I like it about the same. It's just sometimes I don't need that much knife, you know? So it's been nice to have a little, uh, you know, just a short Capara to carry around, and uh, it works really, really well. His work is nearly indistinguishable from factory work. So uh, it's, I can't even tell that that's a mod. It's so perfect, it's really wonderful. Um, obviously you'd have to buy the knife first and then pay more for him to do that. And I know some people are going to say, why would you buy a knife and then pay more money to have them make it less of a knife? It depends on how you look at it. If you look at it like that, then you probably don't want that. But some people might like a shorter, you know, version of whatever knife they've been enjoying. Or maybe they've got a knife that's been in their collection for like years. So the sting of spending X amounts on it has gone out the window and they're just looking to spice it up, which is... Basically the foundation of the entire knife modification world, right? Pretty firm foundation, lots of people interested in stuff like that. So yeah, I think uh, I think there's a, definitely a, a very potent place for somebody who does modifications like that. Go check out uh, Blade Shops on Instagram. Next up, this was also a gift. I have a lot of stuff in here that was that was gifted to me. Uh, you know, over the course of three years, this was a gift from my good friend Shaker MT. This is a Benchmade Custom Shop um, Mini Crooked River with uh, blue G10, black bolsters, blue pivot collar, CPM 20 CV blade. This is such a wonderful knife and is, I, I this is one of Benchmade's best knives ever. It's also one of the most, uh, one of the best knives to customize on their custom shop because of all the different contrasts. You have the pivot collar up next to the pivot hardware and the bolster, which you can change the color of, right? And then the, the different colors of G10, the backspacer, right? The different coatings on the blade or the different colors of blade or finishes on the blade. Um, and then your different steel choices, of course. This is, so, at least, e even if you're not going to buy one, go play with uh, Benchmade's Custom Shop and build yourself a, uh, a mini Crooked River or full-size cro Crooked River there. Just, it's so much fun to do. Moving on here to the next row, we have a very simple and straightforward Microtech uh, Ultratech. Uh, I bought this here recently because I just really wanted an Ultratech in my collection, and I used to own one, and I sold it, and I don't know why. So this is um, one of the newer ones. What's the date on it? Yeah, January of 2021. This guy's in M390 and is a simple stonewash drop point. This is a great EDC-sized OTF, one of the best uh, EDC OTFs out there. Excellent firing power, just a nice size. It's kind of like an automatic 940. That's what it reminds me of. These are pretty pricey. I think they're up to about 290 now. So, but American-made and definitely, definitely still recommendable. Moving on here, this is the uh, the uh, Artisan Cutlery Arius in uh, titanium. Beautifully, can we get it, zoom up there? Oh, yes, beautifully milled titanium. This is one of the uh, Artisan Cutlery knives, and this was sent to me by them, that I just couldn't say no to. Uh, this is such a beautiful design. I think this is a Cerberus knives. Yeah, Cerberus. I think there's the logo right there. But yeah, S35VN, I wish it was M390, but it's not. Just beautiful action. It's just a beautiful carry knife overall. Uh, I think fans of the Spyderco Shaman will find that um, a lot of the lines here are preferable. It's obviously not the same thing as the Shaman with it being a titanium frame lock. But uh, yeah, this is an excellent knife. I think these come in at about 200, something like that. Moving on here, the Lion Steel TRE. Whoops. This is a knife that my wife... Uh, this was actually the first knife that my wife gifted me for our anniversary. Every year, my wife and I do this thing where she picks out a knife. I don't get any input. I don't get to know anything or say anything. She finds a knife she thinks that I will like, and then she gifts it to me. So um, you guys will see actually all of the gifts that she has ever given me uh, as we go through the collection. The Lion Steel TRE Titanium has been wonderful. I've carried it a lot. As you can see, the Anno is actually wearing off of the pocket clip, which happens Right, if you didn't know that, anodization will wear off over time. Uh, but I have very thoroughly loved this knife, and I will continue to love this knife. Very special to me. I think you can still get these. I think they're pretty expensive, though. You can get a G10 version for less, but the titanium ones, I think, last I checked, were about 270 Another gift from my wife, a much more recent one. This is the uh, Spyderco Delica in the Sanmai Damascus and titanium. I think, yeah, this was my anniversary gift last year. Uh, we'll get to my anniversary gift this year, 
believe me. Uh, but yeah, this was my anniversary gift last year. I do not know if these are still available. I want to say that they are two hundred ish, something like that. This is a beautiful knife, and it's the knife that I carry now to uh, special occasions, just because it carries um, just it, it carries a little easier. I do have a MXG deep carry clip on this guy. It just works a little better than the standard clip, and I think it looks better too. Um, but yeah, if I'm going to a formal event, this is the knife that I carry. Um, I just really love it. Nice knife. Moving on here, another gift. <laughs> uh, this is the Reich uh, 1902. This is a stunning knife. Really, I had no idea what Reich was capable of until I handled this knife. The detail on this thing is just unbelievable. This was uh, a gift from a viewer, a very, very generous gift from a viewer. These are numbered. This one is number 68. Gosh, that would have just been awesome for it to be one <laughs> But it isn't, so that's great. I'm happy with 68, right? Lock bar insert. Look at the anno work on this. Oh, the backspacer, excuse me. Uh, the backspacer is just beautiful. The uh, blue marble carbon fiber inlays are just perfect. Oh, Reich does a great job. This is a beautiful, beautiful knife. What's the steel? I think we saw it, M390. I love that they put everything in... Uh, a fancier font on this guy. Really beautiful knife. And I don't think, I mean, considering what knives that look like this generally go for, I don't think that was horribly, maybe between 200 and 240, something like that. Moving on here, getting into some of the wilder stuff. This is a knife that I bought for myself. This is the Vero Engineering Synapse XL, something I've been drooling over for a long time. Finally got my hands on one. I cannot remember how much these cost. <laughs> <laughs> is it two, is, are they around 300, something like, I honestly can't remember, I, I knew that the first chance that I got to get my hands on one, I would get one, in exactly this configuration, a stonewashed M390 blade, uh, you can see right there, this is number 595, this is end cut carbon fiber, it looks like G10, but it's end cut carbon fiber, love the pocket clip, the whole, like, just presentation of this knife is just awesome, uh, really, really happy to finally get my hands on a Vero Engineering. I, I like this regular size and I like the axe and all that. I had to get the XL. This is just, it's just, it's just too cool. Uh, that's, uh, that's why I sought it out. Took a while for them to become available, but, um, yeah, love it. Moving on here, this is kind of a weird one. This is the uh, this is my original Spyderco Shaman that is now sporting um, a a different MXG deep carry clip and different scales. These are the scales that came off of my Rivers Edge Cutlery exclusive Shaman because I've done something else with that. And they just you know I I was like well I'll put them on my original Shaman right. Um, uh, originally I had taken the black scales off of this and put them on the other Shaman which you guys are going to see. Then I took those scales off that shaman and did something else with it, and I had these green ones, and I thought, eh, well, I'll just put them on the old shaman, and then they worked perfectly. So yeah, that's what this uh, what this is. Um, these are now very expensive. You can find them. The Spyderco shaman is something like a two hundred and five, two hundred and ten dollar knife. Wow, I paid one eighty five for this, and even then, I probably paid a little bit too much. But it is a great knife. It's still one of my favorite knives of all time. So, yeah, if you want to check it out, I think they are trickling back into retailers. This is not a knife that is uh, trickling back into retailers at all. This is the Sharp by Design Evo Typhoon. Um, this uh, is uh, this particular version is in Damasteel. Those of you who own this right now, maybe you're even flipping this exact knife on your couch. You remember how long we waited for these. <laughs> and then I'm sure you remember opening this up. And it all being worth it. Uh, I was more than happy to wait, I think, something like nine or ten months for this knife. Um, this version was a little over $500. This is the, um, is it shred or marble? Well, it's carbon fiber. Shred carbon fiber and damask steel made by, uh, or designed by Brian Nadeau of Sharp by Design and made by Riot. Oh my goodness, this is such a wonderful knife. I had to go with the uh, harpoon blade. I'm really, really happy with this. Um, I will never, ever get rid of this knife. There's a lot of knives in this, uh, currently in here, that I'm like, yeah, maybe, you know, and if you're wondering, right, at the 20 minute mark, you're like, does he ever sell his knives? 
I do, but I exclusively sell them to the people who have joined my uh, Patreon. And I cut massive, and I mean massive discounts if I decide to sell something. Um, we do other things on Patreon. That's not the sole purpose of my Patreon. Um, but uh, if I do sell my knives, I sell them there and exclusively only ever to uh, patrons. So well, there is a link for Patreon right down in the description. But uh, you don't have to uh, join uh, if you don't want to. Moving on here, another knife that I probably will never get rid of, and that's the uh, newer Chavez 229 uh, Redemption. This is the standard version with the M390 compound blade, satin finished, and titanium scales. I love this thing. These are also Riot made. I'm a big fan of Riot. I like my US stuff. You guys are about to see a whole bunch of US stuff in a row. But, you know, Riot, that's a company that I will buy from without hesitation, just based on the quality, right? You don't have to agree with me. Uh, I've got my my thoughts on what I will and won't spend my own money on. And uh, Riyadh is a company uh, that I will not hesitate with. Uh, but uh, yeah, I love this thing. The action on it is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I think these came in at, what were these? Three, 350? As compared to the old 228s that were like 500 or 550, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I was happy. Very happy to go with this guy. So yeah, wonderful Big old chunky tank of a knife for sure. Moving on here, another knife that I will never, ever get rid of. This is a very rare version of the Protec Strider SNG Auto. Um, this is titanium and 154cm. These are long gone. This is a much older version of this knife. This particular one is number two of 40. Uh, the titanium is the part that makes me want to keep. It's very unlikely to find an automatic knife that is uh, in titanium, but they did these. These were, I think, originally $495 or something like that. This was actually given to me by my good friend, Jeff Goodenow, who insisted. I said, please, you do not have to give that to me. And he said, no, I want you to have it. And uh, he said, I can tell how much you like it. He sent it in for review. And I said, I do. I, I love it, but you don't have to give it to me. And he did. Um, so, Jeff, thank you, buddy. He's been uh, he's been a big part of this channel since uh, since the beginning, actually. Um, in fact, uh, just to take a moment, Jeff, uh, I think you kind of got the ball rolling on people trusting me with their stuff. Uh, a lot of my content comes from viewer submitted items. 99% of this stuff is, you know, mailed into me. I review it and then I send it back to them. And, um, when you're starting off on YouTube, it's hard to get people to trust you, uh, to do that. It's hard to get, but you need stuff like that to, uh, keep the content on your channel rolling. And Jeff Goodenow was willing to send whatever uh, without you know he didn't really know me and um and so we just had a lot of good interactions and that led to you know, it was a, a huge part of why the channel grew so thank you very much jeff uh really really cool um i never never keep things unless people tell me that i'm allowed to um which is almost never the case uh despite me having a lot of gifts here seriously with the amount of content i've uploaded 2000 uploads 99% of it goes back uh, it will it will always go back Anyways, uh, moving on here, we have the uh, Blade HQ exclusive Spyderco Smock in M4 and Jade. This is the black or titanium, uh, it's the TICN, titanium carbonitride coated uh, blade, which I think is stunning. This is the best looking version of the Smock that I have ever seen, and it will never be leaving my collection. I knew that I wanted a Smock, I just did not want the standard one. I wanted something special, and I bought myself a satin version of the M4 smock, and then they came out with the black one, and so I gave the, I, I did a giveaway, I had two satin finished M4 smocks, um, and uh, instead of doing what a lot of people do, and flip them for profit, which I would never do, I gave those two away on a special giveaway, actually here recently, um, uh, I gave those two away, and uh, kept the black one, I paid for those, uh, those were, you know, knives that I paid full price for. Moving on here, here's the heavily modified um, uh, Spyderco Shaman from River's Edge Cutlery. This is an exclusive that is no longer available. This is an FDE, a PVD FDE uh, blade. 
uh, this nice uh, flat dark earth or bronzy looking blade, which I think is awesome. And originally it had these green scales on it, but I took those off and I put black G10 on it because I thought it would look cooler. Then I decided um, I kind of want it to be in titanium. So I had some flitanium scales and I sent these off to Ridge River's Edge Cutlery. If you guys don't know, they have an amazing Cerakote program where you guys can, you can customize the blade and the scales. It doesn't have to be titanium, it can be aluminum. They even Cerakote G10, right? almost whatever color you want. And I said, can you guys Cerakote these uh, titanium scales, black, and, and then do like the uh, backspace and the pocket clip? And they said, no problem. So they did that, and now I have my ultimate shaman. The amount of money that it cost me to do this was ridiculous. But this is like, in my opinion, this is the coolest shaman that I have ever seen. And it's just perfect. The lockup and the action is wonderful. Uh, the uh, centering on it, everything is just spot on. Um, really, really happy with this knife. Moving on here. Um, one of my more expensive users, this is a fat boy, so he's really stuck in there. Um, this is the, uh, Strider three quarter AR. This is actually a DLT trading exclusive in S 90 V. This is one of the chunkiest knives that I carry on a day to day basis. These are very expensive U S made knives that uh, come in, or they did when they were available at about $600. Uh, these are actually made by Medford and designed by uh, Strider. Yeah, this knife is ridiculous. And it is, um, the design is, I mean, truthfully, the design has flaws. It's very, it's not the most comfortable knife in the world. Um, the jimping will absolutely chew your fingers up. But the quality of it is very, very good. And this thing is unquestionably tough. Running on phosphor bronze washers, nice thick frame lock has never failed, has never slipped. Uh, it actually has wonderful cutting geometry thanks to the aggressive angle down here. Um, and it's very thin, very sharp. Uh, S90V has... I've done some weird stuff with this, including mashing a banana into the pivot. And this thing <laughs> has just shrugged it off. This is not the standard LBS. This is a zirconium LBS that I bought from, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm so sorry to the person who made that for me, but I do love it. It's wonderful, right? This is a great knife. It's remained perfectly centered, lock up, solid, early, all of that, right? This is just, I love this knife. Um, moving on here, some more American stuff. We have, I hunted this guy for a while. This is the uh, Guardian Tactical Recon 40. I decided to go with an all-black version. Uh, LMAX and the smoothest firing operation you have. Oh, there's Guardian Tactical knives have unbelievable action. They just are incredible. You can get the Recon 35 right now, which is the smaller guy. This is the big. This is also probably the largest double action OTF that I have ever handled. And that's part of the reason why I wanted it. Um, I do carry this periodically. Not a lot because it's kind of big and huge and crazy and scary. Uh, in Kansas, we can carry uh, automatic knives legally, even ones that are that big. So I don't have a problem with it. Um, but sometimes it's just, that's kind of the reason I bought the Ultratech is because it's smaller and easier to carry. So if I have an OTF day or a day where I just want to carry an OTF, it's just easier for me to do that. Moving on here, another big boy, another um, hard to find big boy. This is the Microtech Scarab 2. Definitely the most powerful double action OTF that I have ever handled. This guy is also very, very robust. These are really expensive. By the way, the Guardian Tactical Recon 40, if you can find one, they come in at about 380. These guys uh, come in at 500 to 525. They are M390, very cool blade on this guy. Love the uh, inserts there. I love how wide the firing switch is and the action it's just crazy. The uh, the power that that blade uh, fires out with is just amazing. If you see blue stuff, it's the foam right on the inside. <sighs> Sometimes it just collects in there. Um, not a big deal. It's easy to wash out of there. It's not something that's going to hurt your knife, and you can literally just blow it out with compressed air, and it'll be okay. The protection that this case offers, right, when it's closed up, nothing moves. Everything is secure. They don't rattle around in there. Well worth getting a little bit of blue dust uh, on the pocket clip. Uh, this is another gift for my wife. It's actually not an anniversary gift. This was a Christmas present um, back in, I think, 2018. Uh, 2000. Does it say 18 or 19? It says 2019. This was a Christmas gift of 2019. This is a signature series, uh, Microtech Combat Troodon. 
um, with the Hellhound Blade CTS tool for P Steel. Definitely one of the coolest looking OTFs and also a big boy. Um, this was a dream to own this knife. Um, these are about $600. I'm not going to say I think they're absolutely worth every dollar, but I own a lot of stuff that I don't think is worth every dollar you put into it, right? That's the uh, contradiction of being a uh, knife enthusiast. You don't always think that the stuff that you own is worth every day. It's hard to be like, there's tons of stuff in here where I'm like, that is way too much money for that. Give it to me. I'll take, I'll take it. You know, like that's, we do that all the time, right? So very much love that one. Another Microtech, another American knife that uh, was hard to hunt down, but I'm glad that I did. Um, this was actually purchased from, I, I bought this off of one of my viewers I said I was looking for a Microtech stitch, and I really wanted it to be in, like, you know, really good shape. And he said, I have one that's dead mint. And he was right. <laughs> and he cut me a great deal on it. Thank you. You know who you are. This is the Microtech Auto Stitch. Uh, the original design, of course, from Borka Blades. Um, yeah, this is probably the hardest firing side opening auto that I've ever felt. It really, really fires hard. M390. Uh, and the aircraft aluminum. I love the massively oversized fasteners on this thing. Um, I also love the huge firing button. Uh, the blade stock is 187 thousandths. It's just a big, nasty automatic knife. Wonderful. Moving on here, uh, pretty much everything that's left is going to be really hard to uh, to find. I'll just say that right now, so I don't have to say it every single time. Uh, this was a anniversary gift from my wife back in 2018. I believe this is a 2018. Yeah, it says right there. This is the ever elusive um, Microtech uh, uh, SOCOM Elite. Sorry, I was spacing out. Uh, the SOCOM Elite. Uh, these uh, are these became incredibly popular after they dropped again. It's not the original version of the uh, SOCOM, but they dropped uh, a newer version of it in 2018. My wife picked one up. Well, they, I remember she said, yeah, there were a whole bunch of them in stock. They were just sitting there. I just thought you would like this. And I was like, I do like it. And then they were out of stock and <laughs> became incredibly hard to get a hold of the, um, the manual versions, right? There is an automatic version of this, but the manual versions for whatever reason became incredibly popular. And I mean, I say for whatever reason, I know why, because they're freaking awesome, right? And they sound awesome when you deploy them. So she picked up this uh, knife from me for about 280 bucks and uh, gave it to me for our anniversary. And I will never let it go ever. It's never going anywhere. I love this knife. Moving on here, a knife that I purchased, uh, another knife that I purchased from uh, a, a viewer. Um, this is the uh, very rare uh, ZT0392, not the 0393. That's a different knife. This was a factory custom. Uh, this is a collaboration between Rick Hinderer and Zero Tolerance. This was a factory custom version meant to be very similar, if not almost identical, to the Hinder Eclipse. The irony, of course, is that this now costs more than the Eclipse, even considering the new Hinderer shortage. The 0392 is a very rare uh, ZT knife, and it comes in um, different forms. This particular one used to be a... BWBRZ or Blackwash Bronze, but I removed all of the bronze hardware because it had seen enough love that it was kind of fading. And I just put new uh, uh, Hinder uh, Eclipse hardware on it that's just satin. And I think it looks great. This is a user. Um, and the person who sold it to me cut me an excellent deal. I know what these go for on eBay, and I never would have been able to afford it had he charged that price for it, but he didn't. Um, so... This is great. This serial number is, sorry, we've got some nano oil on there, uh, 188. So I can't remember. This might have been from 2014 or so. I can't remember when they stopped making that particular version, but very cool. Moving on here, the Workhorse. A lot of you guys are familiar with this. If you don't know, I'm a huge Hinderer fan. I own a lot of Hinderers. Um, this is an actual, uh, when I say actual, just because we were coming off of a ZT Hinderer. This is a real Hinderer XM18 that I have outfitted with a smooth titanium scale. This is my dedicated user XM. This is an S35VN version, new uh, Triway, right? I think these maybe dropped in 2019. I can't remember. Funny story is that I actually sold this to a buddy uh, he carried and used it for a year, and then I asked him if he still had it, and he said yes, and I said, can I buy it back? So I bought it back. This thing has seen an enormous amount of use. Um, it, at this point, it actually does need um, – I know it doesn't look like it, but it actually does need 
um, to be resharpened. Um, and, you know, other than like the pocket clip, which there you go, there's the scratches from Carrie. You wouldn't really be able to tell that it's been used, but that's just, hinder knives don't generally show, especially if they're stonewashed like this, they just don't show a lot of wear. And, and if you clean the blades off, right? The action on this guy is wonderful. Uh, flipping action is great. Lockup is still completely and totally solid and locking up at the appropriate percentage. And she's still perfectly centered. I love this knife. Expensive. Brand new. A Hinder X-18 will run you 425 bucks. And that's just with G10 on one side. If you want full titanium, you got to pay another 200 bucks for the scale. But right now, it's hard to find them. They are just are like nowhere that's really hard you got to go in the secondary market right moving on here to some more hinders the uh let me get the blue stuff off of this this is the dark horse xm24 the larger version of the xm18 this has a uh at this point in time a very rare finish this is the black stonewashed or stonewashed dlc which is different than both the standard dlc and battle black a lot of people will say, oh, that must be Battle Black. No, Battle Black is actually different. I've got a Battle Black one in here. I'll show you guys. Um, so the fact that this is an XM24 uh, makes it that much weirder, right? There are not many black stonewashed XM24s in, in existence. I have outfitted this one with a uh, textured carbon fiber scale. It's kind of hard to tell, but that's carbon fiber. All black hardware, um, as much as I could. I can't get these pieces in black, but that's okay, right? And then uh, I had a wonderful person sell me their Steel Flame um, uh, Crusader Nut, which is unbelievably rare. I don't even want to go into what those generally go for because that'll it'll just people get upset about the kind of stuff. Um, but the guy who sold this to me, the only reason I bought it because I wouldn't pay that much for them either, guys. If you want to look up what Steel Flame stuff goes for uh, for Hinder Knives on eBay, prepare to be triggered. Um, but the guy who sold this to me made me a ridiculously good deal. Um, and so very grateful for that. That'll stay on my, uh, that XM24 forever. And another XM24 here. This was a dream build of mine. This is uh, actually a Knife Center exclusive XM24 Harpoon Spanto. This particular version is stonewashed. What makes this version special, though, is the fact that it is a full titanium version. I waited for eight years to buy an XM24 titanium scale. They just, sorry, blue stuff in there. Um, they just didn't make them for so long. And thanks to, again, a lot of this stuff is thanks to a viewer. Somebody messaged me on Instagram. He actually, to get my attention, he actually sent a call uh, to get my phone to vibrate because he noticed that these scales were available on the Hinder website. And he knew that um, once they were gone, they were gonna be gone for a long time. Had he not done that, I would have missed this scale. So, to that person you know who you are, you are directly responsible for my dream XM24. I am so glad that I was able to acquire this to get the scale. XM24s, if you can find them brand new, start at 600. And of course, adding a scale, a uh, titanium scale will add another 200. So, those are pricey knives for sure. Moving on here, here's a, an XM in Battle Black, a very rare version. Uh, the XM18, three and a half inch. This is the uh, Monkey Edge Frag Pattern, or MEFP, or Monkey Edge Exclusive. Uh, XM18, three and a half inch in CPM3V. This is from the most recent run. You can see there the Monkey Edge logo. Um, this, this is the Battle Black finish. So DLC is going to also be, like regular DLC is going to be a matte black. The Battle Black is kind of the stonewashed or kind of worn look. And then your stonewashed DLC has more of a... Uh, can we focus? Jeez, more reflectivity to it. For whatever reason, it doesn't want to do both knives in the shot, but there you go. Uh, difference between those finishes there. Let me put this guy back before I drop it. It's always a miracle when I can get through videos like this without dropping anything. Uh, yeah, uh, this was a recent drop through Monkey Edge, uh, the frag pattern versions of the 3V XM18s. The only 3V XM18s uh, that have ever been have been from Monkey Edge, and they do small drops periodically. Somehow, I managed to get one of these. I'm I'm still not sure how that happened, but I did pay full price. Monkey Edge does not care who I am. They didn't do me any special favors. They I have nothing worked out with Monkey Edge. Uh, I had to wait in line and pay full price for it. Moving on here, uh, this is I think a Southern Edge exclusive. I can't remember. 
I paid full price for this one as well. This is the uh, Hinder Eclipse Bowie from Southern Edges, I think. Um, and then I added a smooth um, uh, burgundy or like a, a magenta uh, micarta scale to it, which has worn in so well. I also use this one. My two dedicated, well, I actually have three users, my, my Hinder knives. Um, and it's going to be these two XMs and then, of course, the 0392. So I know this is going to make you cringe, but I really don't care if they touch each other because these are all users, right? People are going to say, he doesn't use his knife because he doesn't want to get a scratch on it. These are users. <laughs> these are you. That does not bother me to have them clink and clank together. But I know that that just sent a bunch of you into an absolute fit. <laughs> so I'm sorry. But yeah, those are my user XMs, right? They have been knocked around. I clean them. I take care of them. But I don't care if those get scratches on them because I, I use and carry those. Moving on here to a knife that I do not use. Let me wipe the... This was recently being... Uh, this was the uh, accompanying me for a, a night of Netflix and chill, so it's got fingerprints all over it. Um, this is my Shirogorov Quantum, which is absolutely dead mint. I said in a uh, video here recently that this is one of the only knives in my... It's very rare for a knife to truly be flawless, and I, I literally go over my knives with a magnifying glass. Um, so this knife is truly flawless. Uh, this is a very expensive knife. This is uh, These come in at about $1,100, but there's almost nothing out there quite like a Shirogorov. I have one other thing in my collection that I think is a little better, but it costs more money. Um, the Quantum, after uh, a viewer sent in his for review, I loved it. I sent his back, and a few months later, or it was actually six months later, I finally pulled the trigger on it. Um, I love the Quantum. And there's... I will say there's nothing else quite like Shirogorov's multi-row bearing system. So, very cool. My most expensive user. Um, a lot of, I think there's plenty of people who just flat out don't believe me. But uh, this is the Rockstead Higo 2 with that beautiful convex mirror polish. A truly mirror polish ZDP 189 blade. Because of the, I've said this many times, because of how they do the blade... Uh, partially the mirror polishing, but mostly the convex edge and the Rockwell hardness of 68 on their ZDP. This will outcut almost anything on the market, right? So if you look up the composition of ZDP 189 and what test results for edge retention, uh, you know, result in, you're going to say, oh, it's a little below M390. Not this guy. This guy will, will triple outcut your standard decently heat treated m390 because of the way that they do this um this is uh carbon fiber and anodized titanium for the liner uh big old um phosphor bronze washers these come in at 1500 this is an example of a knife that i paid way too much money for i do not think that these are 1500 dollars knives i do however think that they're definitely i mean well deserving of a 1000 dollars plus price tag I just love how this knife looks. I love how it feels. Um, and uh, for whatever reason, when I got it, I, I planned on it being a safe queen. I just really wanted to use it and carry it. So I do. And I love carrying it, right? The pocket clip is, is underwhelming for a knife that's so expensive. Everything else, you know, exhibits qualities of a knife that are, you know, really, really expensive. The pocket clip's kind of underwhelming, but I will say it works flawlessly. <laughs> uh, really a joy to carry that one. Moving on here, uh, a version of this knife that is even more difficult to get. This is the actual AD20. Funny story about this. Uh, for my 50,000 subscriber giveaway, I asked uh, you guys, I said, uh, I'll, what do you guys want me to give away? I'll do anything that's got a value of 500 or less. And uh, we had, I had you guys narrow it down. A lot of you guys remember this. Over the course of multiple videos, it was a top 10, then it was a top 5. This guy looked like it was going to be the winner. So um, I somehow managed to track one of these things down and buy it. Brand new, right? And um, then the Sabenza one. <laughs> so I had to turn around and buy another knife, um, which I did happily because I, I told you guys whatever was had the most votes, I would buy. So that was an expensive giveaway. But because I had to pay for this, I kept it. So this is my, uh, believe it or not, is my user... AD20, uh, G10 and CPM20 CV. These are um, the, uh, you know, the production or the, these, these guys, the AD20.5s are thinner and made in uh, Taiwan. 
every bit as high quality though. Um, and then these guys are made in the United States and are, are, are much bigger. So this is a uh, MG or machine ground 8020. They come in at 425. They go for a lot more on the secondary market right now because you can't get them. Um, and then my um, Safe Queen version of this, the one that I do not use, right? Into the check down there, all the triggered comments. You should use your knives. I can't believe he doesn't use it. Oh, I need to tell him out. I think <laughs> I'm not gonna read it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, this, uh, titanium 80, 20, and I'm li I know I sound like a jerk, but I'm just like a, the people who watch my channel regularly, um, they know that there's knives that I don't use. And we, I mean, I, I talk about it all the time. Right. Um, so new people are generally just absolutely mind blown and frustrated that there are knives that I own and paid for that I don't use. That's how I like to enjoy this, guys. Everybody enjoys this type of stuff, right? People who collect, uh, people who are car enthusiasts sometimes own cars that they don't drive. They just own it because they enjoy owning it. And I kind of feel the same way about certain knives. This is the Titanium MG8020, uh, one of the crown jewels of my collection. Uh, this was not difficult to get. I'm sorry, it was not easy to get. And they are currently not easy to get. This is one of the oldest or one of the first ones. As you can see here, it's using the original hardware. That's different from the newer style hardware that they use. Uh, this is an, a slightly newer one. You can see those are a little more flat. These are domed off. So yeah, this was uh, one of the first uh, Titanium 8020s to exist. I'm going to blame that one on Nick Shabazz. Nick Shabazz uh, was the person who lent me his uh, Blue G10 version originally. And then I saw the Titanium version on his channel and I just lost it. Moving on here to the final two crown jewels of my collection. Uh, a lot of you guys remember here recently, uh, I had an anniversary, my five-year anniversary, and my wife went above and beyond. Absolutely just shocked me. Uh, she contacted Brian Nadeau and uh, had a custom arch nemesis made for me. This is absolutely a crown jewel of my collection. Um, I cannot believe that I own this knife. It is a truly sharp on both sides dagger. And you can see there, it's actually a compound ground dagger. This is hollow here uh, initially and then flat ground out of the tip. Beautiful textured titanium transitioning into, oh, just some excellent milling. This is such a wonderful knife. There is nothing in this knife world quite like a Sharp by Design Custom. Um, these are very expensive. In fact, I believe these knives start at $1,500 um, and they go up from there. And they can get more and more and more complicated, right, with different materials and things like that. You guys know I like monochromatic stuff. I do have some colorful stuff in my collection. In fact, you're about to see something very colorful, um, but uh, this is just... I don't think this could be any more perfect. Um, this is wonderful. Brian does not make a lot of these. He doesn't do a book thing. I'm kind of shocked that she was able to, you know, get him to do this. But I'm very grateful. Thank you, Brian Nadeau, for <laughs> just uh, allowing this to be made for me. Um, that's really cool. And thank you, of course, to my wife for um, gifting me this incredible, incredible piece of cutlery. Um my most recent acquisition, the custom, my first, I see, here's the thing. The Arch Nemesis is a custom knife. I did not know that that was coming. I uh, was waiting for my first custom to be built and sent to me. Um, and uh, the Arch Nemesis actually arrived first. But uh, this last knife that's up here um, was technically the first custom order. Um, and uh, it is quite... The looker. Um, this is a Herman Dragonfly, full dress in uh, Timascus. The entire thing is Timascus. The pocket clip, the backspacer, everything, and then the blade is polished Damacor. Um, which, if you don't know, this is not the same thing as Damascus. Damacor is actually proprietary, um, meaning. When you see this, or when you see the word Damacor, it means it is always the same steels. This is one of the most technologically advanced blade steels in existence. Uh, the inner core, you can see there, 
it's it's got a core and then what's uh, wrapped around it or the jacket in San Mai style is Dana steel which is made by the same company and that steel is very specifically RWL 34 and PMC 27 those are powder form steels that create Dana steel which is actually what this is made out of this is Dana steel um, and it's a wonderful blade steel exhibiting uh, performance similar to CPM 154. So they use that as the jacket on this guy. Beautiful polishing on that. Just stunning. And then the core is a steel called N11X, if I'm not mistaken, which is identical, according to Laren Thomas, to Vanax. And if you know what Vanax is, this is a serious, serious blade. <laughs> Just can't. I, it's hard for me to fathom that I own this. I love this knife. Uh, it is perfection, and it is definitely the craziest thing that I own. Um, wonderful, wonderful. I can flip it one more time. Oh, man, the sound of that. Can you hear that? Oh, my gosh. Let's do it this way. Just try not to drop it. That would just be terrible. Ugh. Yeah. Um, the detail work on this is absolutely absurd. And keep in mind, the Timascus is actually being dulled right now because I've had my fingers all over it. The oils on your skin will actually uh, dull Timascus. It can be wiped off, but if it looks vibrant, it actually normally is much more vibrant after it's been uh, cleaned. I've not done a video on this guy yet, but I will. I just wanted to give you guys some close-ups of the pivots and the Timascus and the backspacer. I've not really done that for you guys yet. Um, but I, I really wanted, this was the knife that I was waiting on. I did not want to do a collection update video um, without having my my Herman, right? Wow, 50 minutes in. <laughs> Let's move on to some of the weirder stuff in my collection. Um, and uh, honestly, I'm probably going to have to cut the video right here. Okay, and we're back. Um, so what I have out here is, I've just got a couple of, a few oddball things I've got a drawer of budget knives, and I've got my size comparison knives. You guys are probably very familiar with the knives that are size comparison knives on my channel, like the Ontario Rat Model 1. This guy definitely gets used quite a bit. The Ontario Rat Model 2, right? Which doesn't get used as much, but it's uh, a knife that I like to use as a size comparison knife because everybody knows what it looks like and feels like. Then we have, of course, my Spyderco PM2 outfitted with the um, Flytanium Micarta Scales, very much like this one. We have another gift from my wife, the Spyderco Para 3 in Maximet. Um, That was, I can't remember how long ago that was. This is one of the most used knives in my collection, but these guys are all, you know, these guys uh, are size comparison knives. They're knives that you see every single day um, when I do a knife review. And then we, of course, have the Famous uh, Ritter Hogue RSK MK1 G2. Definitely a knife that gets used a lot. Or it's the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. And then we have a custom bug out, which has replaced my mini bug out for a size comparison knife. This was actually um, given to me by Benchmade. I said, I, I really would like a bug out to use as a permanent size comparison knife. And they said, how about we make you a custom? So that was really nice. Titanium. This one's actually support, uh, sporting flytanium uh, titanium scales now. S90V, black coated blade with the green studs. And then we've got green standoffs back here. Love this knife. Absolutely. Some budget knives. Uh, some of these were, most of these I purchased. Some of them were gifts. We have the uh, Cold Steel Tie Light. This was one that was um, gifted to me. We have the CJRB Rhea. Uh, I think these are, what are these? 30 bucks, 35 bucks, something like that. Cold Steel Tough Light. Still have not cleaned this guy. All right. Most of the knives in this drawer are 60 or less. Uh, CJRB um, Feldspar, D2 and G10. Love that one. This was a gift from Civivi. Um, Civivi sent me my own um, uh, Elementum with the wood scales, and then it actually says Metal Complex on the outside of it. So thank you for that, Civivi. I appreciate that. Um, then we have another Civivi, the um, Ortis. I think this is probably one of the greatest budget knives ever. Definitely. Uh, this also one of the greatest budget knives ever, and that is the Civivi Praxis. Uh, moving on here, we have the Knives Plus exclusive version of the QSP Penguin in Micarta and S35VN. Very cool. That knife definitely gets carried and used. We have the 
uh, CGRB Scoria, I think. This is a test of like memory for sure. Um, this is one of, if not CGRB's best knives. AR RPM 9, a titanium pocket clip, very thin contoured um, micarta scales. Definitely an excellent knife. I, this is the one that's a little more expensive. I think these are 75 or so, but a really good knife. Uh, I keep these around for um, basically just for reference, but this is the Open L8. Probably my least favorite knife in the entire collection and honestly, one of my least favorite knives ever. No, you can't change my mind. I don't really like them, but I have some. Another great budget knife. This is the Civivi Imperium uh, front flipper. Definitely a great one there. Another um, Cold Steel Tough Light. This used to belong to somebody else. Somebody uh, gave me like a huge collection of Cold Steel knives, and I just I kept this one around um, because it is still in full working condition. Another Openel. This is an Openel number nine in the carbon or carbone steel, right? Uh, it does, it, it has seen some use. I broke down a bunch of boxes with it and you know, in all fairness, it, uh, it did really well. I just don't like how it looks or feels. <laughs> um, I have a mini tough light, which I have not reviewed yet. I really need to review this guy. Um, I have a cold steel. This is another one that was, uh, gifted with that collection. The pro light, um, pretty cool. It looks like it's missing a stud, but Okay. Uh, I have a uh, Spyderco Tenacious, which was also, uh, that was just part of that collection. It's not a cold steel knife, but it was it was gifted as part of that collection. Definitely going to keep that. Kind of feel like I need a Tenacious in my collection. My first pocket knife ever, which is a, I think we can still see the model number on it. A Camillus number 70. This was my grandpa's knife, and he gave it to my dad, and my dad gave it to me when I was nine, and then took it away, and then gave it back when I was 11, <laughs> because I was throwing it in um, a refrigerator box, trying to get it to stick. We have this hilarious, I've, I actually, this is my favorite Open L, I'll say that. This is the massively oversized um, Open L number 13. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I need to review this. I have not reviewed it yet, but it is hilarious. I think these were like a hundred bucks. This was gifted to me randomly, um, by, uh, a viewer. And I, I love, I do love this one. This is my favorite open L for sure. I got some fixed blades. I gotta be honest. I cannot remember what the name of this fixed blade is. Um, but the finish is on purpose, right? Uh, it's not, not corrosion. That's intentional. This is a fixed blade that was made by, um, alien knives. Um, so, uh, and I enjoy it. Um, it's definitely a knife that gets used periodically around here, like the burlap micarta scales. It's cool. I really appreciate that one. Um, we have a fixed blade, uh, right here, and I'm not really sure what this is called. Maybe it'll have something on it. This was also donated as part of that collection. USA. Oh, tops USA. So it's a tops fixed blade. Incredibly thick. It's like a quarter inch on the spine. No idea. Uh, what this is called, but it was part of that uh, collection. I'm sure one day I'll end up giving that away. And then we have my Moro Robust, which is my most used fixed blade. This is the knife that I take out with me when I do a yard, you know, projects in the yard or whatever. It definitely gets beaten on. It's also been thrown repeatedly at a fence, if you guys saw that video, and survived. Just, like, no problem. Look at that. The tip, just fine. <laughs> Really, really like the uh, more robust. And, you know, for 15 bucks, that's got to be the best durability to cost ratio in existence. Uh, the only stuff that I have left, I guess I'll, uh, I'll get the sword. Um, if you guys don't know, I do own one sword. And it's the Cold Steel Hand and a Half Sword. Right here. Um, this uh, sword has only seen one bout of use. And that was to chop my old iPad in half. I had an iPad that absolutely crapped out. And I mean crapped out beyond repair. It was never going to come back. Um, and uh, my uh, viewing audience said the best use for the sword, which I bought because I literally just wanted to own a sword. Um, they said you should chop that old busted iPad in half. My wonderful patrons actually paid for a brand new iPad, which I use on this channel to draw names live. It just works as it's, it's a convenient second screen. Uh, very useful. I use it all the time for channel stuff. So thank you very much to the patrons who helped me buy that. 
Um, but I did, yeah, I did chop that old iPad in half with a sword. There's a video um, of, of me doing that with some light piano music. Um, so you can check that out if you'd like. There's just three other items here. I just included them because I knew people would ask. I do currently own three watches. I used to have a fourth Seiko, um, or I'm sorry, a third Seiko, uh, and I, I gave that away. But I have my original um, Seiko Samurai. This uh, used to belong to Nick Shabazz, and he sold it to me. And this is what ironically got me into watches um, as someone we know says, you know, very specifically not to do. <laughs> I love this. This has a, it doesn't, it didn't come with this clasp, but the one he sold me came with the sort of ratchet or whatever you call that clasp. I really like the blue. The blue didn't always go. I, I, sorry, I was saying I do really like the blue, but the blue doesn't always go with all of my uh, outfits. So I bought a um, black dial King Samurai with the waffle dial and uh, it's got the bronze ticker hands or whatever you got. I'm not a watch person. So if watch people watching this are like, oh my God, what a noob. I am. I'm an absolute noob, but I do like watches. Bought the uh, custom um, uh, band, as I have found that I need to be saying it, and another ratchet clasp from Strap Code. And I really, really like this one. Wear that one a lot. And then I um, also own a Galaxy watch, which is this one right here that's been modified to look like more of a traditional watch. I'm not really a leather band guy. I just don't like it. Um, this is what I wear a lot of the time, um, a lot of times during reviews. Uh, if there's something that my wife is going to need to contact me for, if I'm doing a review, I take my phone and I put it on silent and do not disturb because I don't want it buzzing in the middle of a video. Um, I put that watch on my wrist so I know if she's trying to contact me, it won't interrupt the video, but it'll let me know. Um, and that way you guys don't get a crap quality video and I can still answer my phone if I really need to. Is there anything else? Do I own anything else that you guys need to see? No, you guys have seen it all. Um, minus three acquisitions that are still on their way, but, uh, this is, uh, this is my entire knife collection. This is everything. Um, I hope this was entertaining. I, I love, um, I love the knife hobby. I love collecting knives. Obviously nobody needs this many knives. My collection has grown due to, um, you know, some of them were my own actual acquisitions that I hunted out. And we obviously have a lot of generous people in this community who insist on giving me things, um, but I want to stress that I do try to give the vast majority of those types of things away when retailers, manufacturers, my, uh, custom uh, makers, um, you know, and uh, uh, people from the community, when they give me things, I try to, you know, I, I try to give that stuff away um, because it, it, it makes more sense for me to enjoy it for the time that it's with me and then move it on to the people who watch my channel and support me. Um, so... Uh, I do have a few things that I keep that are gifts, and it's mainly for sentimental reasons. And then I have things that I have, you know, worked hard to acquire um, and spent money on, and I just want to keep in my collection. So, largely, what you saw in the Pelican case is a, um, and I'll move that back out here. Let me just scooch this stuff over. What's in the Pelican case is largely a permanent part of my collection, meaning I will likely never sell the stuff that's in here. Um, but if I do, uh, then like I said, I, I sell my stuff on, on Patreon and I generally take whatever the original, not the, the current value, but whatever the original price of it was from a retailer, I generally take that and cut it in half or at least cut it by 30%. Um, that's generally how I do it. And then what I do with those funds is I use the funds to purchase things uh, that I can turn back into content. So it, you know, kind of creates a cycle with this channel. Uh, but I don't do that all the time. It's pretty rare. But yeah, this is the main core. This is the stuff that I've, you know, I don't have the best collection in the whole world, but this is the stuff that I have, you know, specifically hunted down, the stuff that brings me the most joy. Thank you to everybody um, who has um, helped me uh, acquire this stuff. If you've sold me a knife or if you've gifted me a knife, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to do this and then share it with the rest of the community. Um, and thank you to the people who have supported this channel uh, in any way, shape, or form, whether you're a Patreon or a part of the Knights of the Round or you are uh, somebody who um, just likes to come hang out and watch, right? Thank you very much. I hope this was um, 
uh, enjoyable. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, kicking back and watching me go over my collection. This is probably the longest video that I've ever done. And I will do this video again as, uh, as uh, you know, the next time, you know, maybe six months or a year from now, we'll do it again when the, when the um, collection has expanded and new things are here. So anyways, um, please... If you're not subscribed and you enjoy Knife content or you like this video for whatever reason, if you'd like to subscribe, uh, please subscribe. Please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there. And like I said, subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.